All right, so we are back and welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today I am joined by my partner in crime in Mr. Nub Rates. How's it going, bro? Hello. Hello, this very normal intro after uh, the failed oh, attempt. Oh, man. <laughs> Guys, literally before before I sh uh, did this intro, right, I said one, I was like, I, I just started bursting out laughing. I was like, I sounded like a girl. And then we spent about 10 <laughs> minutes just laughing for no reason. <laughs> it's but, been a ride. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, basically what we're going to do today is we actually did the legendary version over on Nub Raid's channel. And today we're going to be doing the epics of who do we feel are the best epics in every faction, but not from the Void Affinity. So we're going to exclude those mm. today. So no Demifers, no man eaters. And if we was put on the spot by Raid and they were like, listen, Nubs, listen, YST. <laughs> if you do not pick your favorite champion from every faction, Cornelia is going to put you back to sleep every single time that you wake up in real life. And we'll be like, you know. It's going to be our decision now. We're going to be choosing out the best ones here. <laughs> so um, in honor of Cornelia, Mr. Nubraids, oh. would you like to yes. kick us off of who do you think is the best epic starting from down here this time? Ooh. Oh, okay. We're going reverse style. Sylvan All right. Watchers. Let's go. Sylvan Watchers. Okay, tough. Okay, no, it's not tough. I know exactly who I'm picking. We are going for ba -brum, Creedon the Blue. He's Ooh. my pick. Definitely my pick. This guy is so unbelievably good. Um, the triple hit A1 that can freeze, double hit AOE that can freeze, and then of course you know speed boosting and all of that. It's just a, he's a hard carry for my account in so many cursed city stages, and I can imagine like if you're an earlier game account, he is insane. Like he opens up Fire Knight hard in a big way, comboed with Newt. Uh, yeah, he he hard carries like I said so many uh, cursed city stages. This is he's my pick for sure for 2024. Create on the blue. I think he's one of the best epics they've ever released like literally ever all time he's amazing yeah he's really powerful i remember when i when i got him as well i was like damn like even imagine getting this guy on the free to play that crowd control would be nuts with that yeah. aoe each hit placement yeah creedence really really strong damn um <laughs> i kind of spiced yeah, yeah. it up and it kicked me down i was like i wanted to choose creedence <laughs> um there's some other good ones i'll probably go for if canelia is going to put me back to sleep for the rest of my life uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> revitalizing rest and all that good stuff i can't be having that <laughs> um, it's between daithi or ruella i think i would lean towards uh ruella as a must build in my opinion okay yeah um she's just very cool you think about the phantom shogun's grove brings in those fundamental debuff she's great for the clan boss great for any other bosses you need to de decrease defense and weaken she's got you covered and decrease speed and steals mm -hmm. term meter and fills term meter and crit rate i think she's a no-brainer um to build on many accounts out there yeah Yep, she's a great pick. Yeah, the triple hits again with Curse City have really turned out to be so useful. And like you said, if you're progressing through the Fire Knight dungeons as well, yeah, mm -hmm. that's super good. Yeah, yeah, she's a very good pick. She was actually on a progressive chance, right? The other day. Uh, she, yeah, she probably was. I don't oh, really pay attention to the is. epics much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they blend together. Oh, boy. Yeah, Miss Ryder, uh, you'd kind of agree, right? He'd be like the next in line. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I probably would have picked him myself, but. Then when I thought about it, when you said Ruella, I think, yeah, Ruella is probably more useful. Like, Dahi's really good, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's not essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ruella is more unique. That's and guys, in the comment section, um, kind of get involved as well. Let us know who do you value the most in terms of epics in this game for the start of 2024. It doesn't have to be every faction, of course, but if there's one that the other viewers can go through and see ones that they might want to max up, um, definitely let us know your experiences with them. And this game that we're doing today, I should have um, said it before, but we were just cracking up before the intro. <laughs> but, um, the way that this is going to work is that if Nubs chooses somebody, I cannot choose that champion. And you have to let us know towards mm -hmm. the end who had the best team, I guess, or best squad of champions. Um, oh, wait, this kind of leads me into first pick on Shadowkin. Yeah, Ooh. you get first pick Shadowkin this time. That's fair. That's fair. Actually, this actually works pretty well. Yeah, we have like alternate first pick so factions this time. Oh. You're picking Kenzen. He's the best <laughs> epic as well. He's the best epic as well. <laughs> Just for this video. <laughs> uh, man, there's some really good epics here. Yes. Damn. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Damn, there is. This is stacked. Oh. If I was to choose the one, who would I go for? I think it'd, it'd have to be the Taragi, the frog, man. Yeah. I think it has to be the frog. But um, I think what it comes down to is that ally protection, that shield, that self-healing as well, like a snick track. He brings in AOE, provokes for other areas, decrease attack. Um, we've got poisons that can reflect back to a boss to solo stuff like the Scarab King, um, especially in the Centrano stages. 
Yeah, man, I think he's... I know that some people would say to me that he dies very easily and stuff, but it's like other champions, right? You need those core mechanics around him to really bring him to life in like a clan yeah. boss team, like a... Um, who's a good example? Like an underpriest Brogni, right? Extending that mm -hmm. shield and heals and stuff. But overall, he's a really top tier one. Look at his reviews, man. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a great pick. Yeah, he, he would have been my first pick as well. M my second pick would be right beside him, Hatatsu, I think I go for here. Ooh, you'd actually go um, for... I'm actually happy you said that. Go on. Yeah, I think this guy's super underrated. Like, yeah. he brings you increased defense, lots of healing, AOE decreased attack, the single target leech. Uh, he's got good aura, good passive, very useful. I've used him, been very clutch in some of my Cursed City stages. Again, on an end game account, he has been amazing. Hard carried some of the, the Soul Cross stages that are nightmare hard. Um, yeah, he's he's really, really strong. Very underrated. Defense-based damage as well. His damage ends up being actually pretty good, surprisingly good. Yeah, I think Hitatsu is very strong. Yeah, I remember I used him in the clan boss draft, right? And yeah, I remember guy, that too. <laughs> it's like when you're looking for all of these components out of an epic, including the leech, it's very hard. I think it is impossible to find um, with every yeah. single thing considered. So yeah, he's very, very strong. One thing I would like to change about him is the books. I look at this, man. Oh yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's like, I remember on that free to play account, right? I was there like, please give me a damn book. I'm sweating. <laughs> give me my cooldowns. <laughs> I think honorable mentions here, because um, there is a lot. I'd say someone like Nagorio is pretty good. Um, if you need a damage yeah. dealer, Gembos, Fenshi, a Boro. We can go on and on, right? But I think yeah. non-void probably Fenshi. Do you agree? Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah, I've been meaning to try him more. I think he's quite cool. Yeah, I Fire Knight type. It's, it's that yeah. two turn cooldown, man. It's just. You know, it's not a mm -hmm. three turn. You can cycle that so well. Really cool. Yeah, he's bound to come into some Curse City stages at some point. All right, for yeah. sure. All right, dwarfs. Oh, there she is. Ooh. There she Ooh. is. <laughs> You're right, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm first picker. Oh. No, she's going to say, go back to sleep, nubs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Get her away. Imagine. Imagine waking up beside her in the bed. You'd be terrified. <laughs> Every time you wake up, she's the, like, the back creepy to sleep. doll. Oh, oh, yeah. No, thanks. She's not my pick. Get her out of here. Oh, wow. There's some, oh, there's some really good ones here. Let's go with the op. Let's go Geomancer. I think he still stands tall as mm -hmm. being the best one. Right. The single target burn. That then reflects like max HP damage back. It's just so powerful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's just so useful everywhere. So got to pick Geomancer. We all know what Geomancer can do. He's still doing it here. So yeah, he's the pick. Yeah. Geomancer's top tier. I don't use him as much as I used to. I remember when yeah, uh, Hydra same. felt impossible without a bloody Geomancer. It's kind of right. shifted now, right? Yeah. Um, there's been so many other champs that are really good to add it in since. And who do I think is the best non-void? Sure, weirdly, I'm, mm. look, I'm looking at Cadelia, right? And I'm like, I think you are the best one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty hard. There's Melgus, Philia. She's good for... Oh, man, I'm going to go with Cadelia. I think I am. Okay. I think if it was Void as well, probably would have been, been a bit different. Oh, yeah. Void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what is that on my screen, by the way? Can you see that? It looks like it's sun. Oh, it is. The sun is reflecting. I thought we... <laughs> Yo, Canelio's coming for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> she's there. <laughs> Do you know that the ring movie she's when coming. they come out the TV? Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's going to start coming out of there, man. Uh... <laughs> yeah, guys, that's just a light reflection. I don't know where that's coming from. I've got my blinds down. It's, probably, it's like a little angle. It's just... Yeah, yeah, it's just a, a square. It's snuck through. Uh, but yeah, uh -huh. Canelia, I think it's a shame that they kind of, you know, destroyed the frenzy gear in this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the bomb situation. But I think outside of that, I think she still is, has a lot of value because she can still solo so many other bosses with like other gear mm -hmm. sets. But in terms of classic arena, AOE sleep with a fear replacement and a strong crowd control for Doom Tower as well for the waves. Yeah, it's very good. And then you can actually use this revitalizing rest to your advantage in stuff like the Doom Tower on a two turn cooldown to like, Let's just say you're progressing and the people keep falling off. Just keep sleeping. Someone that's about to die, they get hit in their full HP again, right? Um, yeah. You've got Universal Aura, 18% in all battles. And also a nice A1 for the Eternal Dragon because you can actually um, increase those cooldowns of the skills, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. overall, I think Canelia still stands. Like she might not be as impactful because of the bomb or stuff. But yeah. I think I probably would still choose her over the other ones here. But yeah. second best tonight, I probably would have went with Filia. I think she's very good for Dark Fae. Boonchan right. passive, nuke the, the waves and kind of control the turn meter. Yeah, she's strong. I'd probably more honorable mention the ally attack and the AoE 
with strength. She's a good damage dealer. Very good for a lot of, again, her uh, Do you know what? You, ca- you said this to me before, right? And I actually did take the time to max her up. I don't mm. know what it is. I don't think I like her as much as other people. <sighs> No. I'm sorry, man. She's she's great. She's really good. I did, Julius, I didn't see the... Um, maybe I'm just not heavily invested into damage. I think this is the best part of her kit, having an AoE strengthen on a three-turn cooldown, the big version. So yeah, great you build her like, fast the damage, yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure. If, if I was that early game, would I invest into her? Probably. Yeah, but... <laughs> Probably. You don't get any bonus points for our bonus picks, though. Only for the... Only yeah. points for main picks. <laughs> so your bonus pick was the... I've got a name already. My, Morag. <laughs> Morag, yeah. My actual pick is Geomancer. Geomancer, yeah. <laughs> All right. right. Um, Knight's Revenants. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Man, we've got some good ones in here. We're doing the... F- and do you know what? We've actually got the free to play at the moment. It's kind of like one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video. Because you yeah, yeah. can't pick legendaries, right? During that series. So we're actually stuck to these epics and below. So it's actually helping me choose who I want to pull here. <laughs> um, There's some really good ones here. Honestly... I'm not just saying this to be biased because I chose her as my starter champion. I think yeah. Miscreated Monster is the best champion from the epics in this faction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh would, my gosh. My this yeah. guy, right? Rank 50. Just to put it in perspective, rank 50, no War Master, nothing yet on my free-to-play account. He is carrying in Doom Tower, carrying in Classic Arena, <laughs> and also in... Um, he's doing my campaign farming at stage 50, level 50. Uh, 12 free brew. Oh, wow. Yeah, Jeez. in like 1 minute 20. It's still... It's pretty long, but he does it at rank 50, and I think... That's pretty cool, right? Um, yeah. I think AoE stuns. We've got those massive shields for the spiders as well. We've got ally protection with that true fear upon being hit by targets under ally protection. Mm-hmm. A1 decreased defense and stun. And also in arena battles, aura by 33%. He's just a massive carry, man. Massive yeah. carry. He's got more base HP than most HP legendaries as well. <laughs> yeah, like, I think what? what lets him down a little <laughs> bit, I would say, if I just move you out of the way, is yeah. that defense is low, man. Oh, it's very low, yeah, yeah. It's very low. So if you want to, you know, get the most out of him for survivability <clears> endgame, <throat> um, it can get a bit dicey. But in terms of PvE, this guy is an absolute miscreated monster. But he's in the wrong yeah. faction now. I think he should be undead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he really should be. You know, I've never pulled him. Really? I don't have him. Yeah, somehow, just never pull that champ. Crazy. Wow. Uh, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, my pick, I'll go with Rector Drath. I, think I thought so. Yeah. Obvious pick. Like, she's so good. Such a strong epic reviver, like so strong. Certainly when we exclude voids, I think she's the best one, probably by miles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, tons of healing for your team, veil for your team as well. That's very unique, very limited, even brings decreased attack if you want. But yeah, loads of healing, give you bonus resistance. Uh, yeah, she's just so, so good. So good. Yeah, she was um, actually, so- I remember the first time I ever beat the um, Eternal Dragon, right? And there, were, ah, there, yes. there wasn't a crazy amount of burners back then. It was like Underpriest Brogni just came into the game, but I was still doing the fusion. Yeah. I was like, damn, I didn't have a Drexel or anything. And right, I had, right. once I got my Underpriest, I kind of just used the A1 for the burns. He didn't have books at that time. And then I actually used her A1 decrease attack. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh, yeah. if i don't land yeah. it once i lost the battle so to, oh like, wow like, can you imagine how, how long oh, no. it took me to do that i yeah. can imagine <laughs> yeah she's really cool man um we can this is actually yep. um auntie nub rates like the one that we've seen in the chat that's right yeah. auntie nub, that's with me that's what i look like <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of champions in that night's roast all right so yeah they're very good dark elves Ooh. yes Ooh. okay let me have a look um there's actually a lot here that aren't great. Do you know what? Before you choose that, right? What do you think of this chick above my shoulder? Oh, yeah. I just pulled her myself, actually. I, mm-hmm. I think she seems pretty terrible, but I haven't used her. I don't know what to think rubbish. about her. Like, if I think early game, it's a thing is you have to wait like three years. Yeah, you're not getting her early game, though. Like, just... You have to wait three years <laughs> for like a strength and that's on a worse cooldown than Morag. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, no, <laughs> no, she's bad. Like, reviving death on herself. Maybe on so- herself. She's really tanky, though. So, like, what's the point? I don't I don't get it, man. Yeah. I don't get her. She seems she's just bad. There's some interesting ones. I think the other Doom Tower champions are the way to go for this faction. I would say I picked Dark Kale. Um, he's the safe pick. Like, lots of poisons, Ooh. AoE debuff extension and decreased attack, blowing up poisons A1. Yeah, he's great. He's really, really good. Great yeah. epic. Yeah, I used it for a very long time in my Poison Explosion teams for ages. So did I. Yeah. Yes. And it's this part here, like, for anyone that's not aware, yeah. decreased crit rate is so hard to get, and it kind of, like, alleviates those bad runs. And if you're doing, like, multiple dragon runs, let's just say, and, you know, you're like, damn, why is my run failed? Sometimes it is because of those bad crits back-to-back. Yeah. So having that de- decreased crit rate on something like the dragon, 
just by having something that he does himself as a main component. Yeah, man. Yeah. Really good synergy. Um, I'm curious what you're going to pick. Rian de Conjurer. Okay. Rian de Conjurer. Um, I, think, I, only, I, I think she's better than Madame Ceres. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I could, that's arguable for sure. Yeah. It brings a yeah. revive, which is really nice. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I feel like it depends. I think it's because of where I am in the game, but I do bring in mm -hmm. these champions that ignore like that 100% defense in a sense, once I kind of stack everything up. And then you yeah. start to get more of a value from the weekend because you're already ignoring defense, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like this part of a kit, but also for live arena, if you need a reviver and also a buff stripper, Madam Ceres can't revive, right? But you can still do that right. with this champion. And also a block buffs, actually pretty good for the first rotation of, was it Amy Staluna arc when I used it? I was trying a team oh, with her. Oh, wow, all right. Because yeah. do you know, cause in that team, in the previous rotation, I used Madam Ceres to strip, but the decreased attack yeah. I just felt was more valuable for Amius. But mm -hmm, you, I, you could yeah, get away is, yeah. with this followed by a block buffs. It's actually pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. No, I, Rianne would have probably been my second choice as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Can't stand this dude, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Warden with a passion. <laughs> all right um where we at undead hordes wait yes. you went first in our last one right uh uh yeah you're yes. dark so kill. it's your pick yes yeah oh man this is a tough one there's no oh there is one void here now i was gonna say there's no voids they just added yeah one. ostrox you know i put i was actually i was summoning void shards right i was like yeah this dude popped out i was like where the hell was i when this dude got <laughs> released i don't recall him ever coming out been very recent yeah very recent he's she's pretty decent i think it's this part here. Right. i like this part the aoe block bus yeah. three turns yeah yeah increase accuracy yeah so we're not talking about ostrox today we're not talking no. about ostrox um <laughs> if i could if i was to invest into one it would probably be seeker yeah it's joyous yeah. every time i'm making a clan boss team and i'm like trying to do 10 meter stuff or whatever that may be right and then mm -hmm. i make the video and i know for a hundred percent chance in the comment section uh, who can you replace for Seeker? And it's like, <laughs> well, in this team, maybe nobody, yeah. right? Um, yeah, outside of that, I think he's still very powerful for other areas. You could bring him for just provokes on the A1 for stuff like the Magma Dragon or whatever that may be. Annoying for Arena yeah. as well. And that mm -hmm. 10 meter fill with the increased attack, you know, pair it up in some nice energies. He's a cool champ. He's, he's a really good pick, yeah. Okay, for me, ah, oh, geez. So, Core Grab, Re Revive is nice. Husk obviously is is good. Maybe not as important anymore. Vogoth is good. Mossley and Mage even Anax, is good. Yeah. Anax is is good too. There's a lot of stuff that's good. Oh, it's hard to pick one. <laughs> um, which one stands out as like the must build? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say at you like pick me, buddy. Karam. It's not Karam. I'll tell you that much. It's not Karam. <laughs> Are you sad now? The Valtina? Not, not the fight. It looks just like Karam. It's not him either. Hexia. Yeah. <laughs> Hexia. No. Oh, just looking at you, little... She looks quite cool, but no. I'll, I'll go with. Uh, I'll go Voga. Let's go Voga. Uh, the poopy head. That's tough though. Yeah, I, I just think he's he's great. Like he's a great budget option. Yeah. Um, you know, so for an epic, super strong. He has the A we provoke. That's really useful. Triple hit A one. I can extend debuffs as well. It's really nice. And then the passives are crazy, right? The leech passive. Um, healing your team passive is so good. So mm -hmm. I think he's just very flexible. Um, yeah, helps you stay alive big time. You can obviously cheese Bommel, like with multiple Vogots and stuff like that, which is cool, but great for just progressing on bosses. It's going to be really good, I think, for Cursed City as well. Again, you could build him super tanky. You could build him like with accuracy for the crowd control. Lots of ways. So yeah. I think Vogoth. No, Vogoth's a great pick. I think if I wasn't to choose Seeker, I think Seeker's yeah. mainly like scarcity value because of how limited it is in these rarities. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for universal value, I'd have probably leaned towards a Vogoth, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just a hard carry, right? Anywhere. Yeah. But do you know who really surprised me, right? For the long... I think mm -hmm. when I first started this game, I never had a Gore Grab for ages. I think I got my Arbiter before I got a Gore Grab, so I never actually yeah, got to experience actually, yeah. and love this champion, <laughs> right? But I pulled him he's on... Good. I pulled him on day three of the free-to-play. And... Oh. And he has been massive because... Look at his aura, and because we got these legendaries, and no one has an Arbiter yet... This is <laughs> yeah. massive with the increased attack to pair Raphalos. Um, yeah. Really strong. Now, yeah, Gore Grab's great. Weirdly, there's actually another champion I'll speak about later, but... Okay. Uh, Demon Spawn. Go for it. Uh, okay. First bit. Ooh. Ooh. There's, there's some good uh, ones here. Bloody hell. Oh, uh, man. Okay, this is very tough. Very, very tough. Uh, I guess I'll probably go for the most unique one in terms of... Val I'll go for Allure. Okay. Yeah with the lore i think yeah so 
obviously she just brings some crazy turn meter control in the A1. I think, you know, for epic only sort of situations, it's just unrivaled, even better than most legendaries. Like I do feel like perhaps there are you know more options nowadays for Allure, but nonetheless, you come to Dark Fey, you come to Fire Knight Normal, like you're still locking her in, pretty much guaranteed. She's that strong. Anywhere you can turn meter control, she's insane. Curse City, yeah. she's gonna be insane for some of those fights, no question. Uh yeah, I, I, th I Allure, she's got to be. The A1 is just so overpowered, it's insane. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think what's really good about Allure is straight out the packet, even if you don't have epic books, you need zero books to enable that A1, which is the yeah. main component of her key. I think that's very strong. <laughs> Do I keep saying this, right? I'm going to keep saying it. Every time Allure comes up in a video, I would mm -hmm. love to see some form of maybe, I don't know, maybe a fusion or something. I would like to see a legendary version of Allure. And the reason why I say oh, that yeah. is in Call of the Arbiter, she was a massive part, right? Um, she was, that yeah. whole story with Bad El Kazar, and <laughs> I feel like Bad El Kazar got the kind of prelim with the Valkanen, right, of how he was before, but we never yeah. actually got to see the better version of the Allure, weirdly, or... That would be cool. I don't know. Some... Supre Supreme Allure, Void yeah. Legendary or something. I know, I just feel like, can you imagine, <laughs> they should make a Supreme Allure that could do a freeze for the Finite Hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be sick. That I, actually I think makes everyone a lot would go for it, right? Maybe bring in like oh, a, an increased speed on an AoE with a massive um, A1 for, the, for the, the free stuff. I think everyone yeah, would yeah. go for it. Yeah, that A1 but placing freezes would be nuts. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, um, yep. For me, I would probably... Oh, for God's sake. When you take a lore away, it's like, damn. <laughs> um, no, there's some really good ones. Like, lots of really good ones. There is some really good ones. Most of them are void for me. Um, I'd have to just well, say Magna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's fun for yeah, sure. Yeah, Magna is just massive, massive HP nuka, right? Kind of puts these legendaries yeah. to shame. Like, if I said he's to you, literally, yeah. <laughs> if I said to you, oh, do you want the Fatalis Blade Master or Magna in your as your HP nuka right now, as of today? No, I'd still go Fatalis. <laughs> no, no, not, not to have. If you, if you, if you was like, you know, a life or death situation, and you was going to this a battle, right? And you're like, yo, yeah. you're, who, who are you banking on here to deal that damage for you? Oh, well, Magnar does hit harder, no question. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think yeah. he hits almost twice as hard. It's kind of kind of gross. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's cool. Um, I think he's even um, pretty good for Hydra as well. I like the effect yeah. of the debuff spread effect, taking the random debuffs and placing it on burn targets. But yeah, man, he's pretty decent. Yeah, no, he's he's a really good pick. Yeah, that would, that would have been the second pick. This guy's sure. weirdly pretty good as well. I've never given him a chance. Yeah. He's, he's kind Not of got this um, secret effect, right? I think it's this one. Increased defense and feels to me it's by 20%. It does. It's pretty good. All right. Yeah. Um, we got the orcs. Mm -hmm. Is this Wait, me or you? I don't even know, you know. We're the back pedal. <laughs> back the to demons, the oh, you no, went, I you picked the lore and then you picked. Yeah. So, yeah, it's you first. You first. Um, so, the champion I wanted to mention, right, which really, really surprised me, yeah. is Ultimate Gallic. I, Whoa, what? Okay. Yeah, like, I'm not sure if he's my pick, but I just want to... Okay. I think one issue with him is he needs increased attack to enable the burns. But yeah. one thing that I very... I think so many people have probably overlooked this. This passive is so good for clan boss progression because fully heals his champion and instantly removes any st stun debuffs when they are placed. So what I'm doing is, at the moment on the free-to-play, is using him as my stun target. He's never oh, dying yeah, yeah. as my stun champion, right? Um, unless I yeah. die from the AoEs. But he's also enabling the kit of Raphalos to deal more damage because we've got burns and then we've got mm -hmm. this um, thing to keep me alive longer. And also very good for the spiders. And if, if anyone that wasn't aware, there's not a lot of AoE HP burners from the epics and below outside of Mordecai. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he surprised me a lot, but he's, he wouldn't be my go-to pick, I guess. I think mm -hmm. if I was to choose one, I'd probably lean towards the Tagor, I think. Ah, I was gonna pick him. Nice. Actually, nice, you know what? Yeah. You could go with the. I'm gonna go with Dr. Pierce. Actually. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of want them both to be mentioned. So yeah, um, Dr. Pierce is kind of if you don't have a stagnate, I would say he's kind of next best thing because this one actually requires critical hits for the placement. That's the only downside. But he also mm -hmm. comes through this provoke, which is very good for just you know for in arena or doom tower. He's got that reflect damage for maybe fire night progression and an A1 decreased accuracy if you need it. Um, yeah, man, I'm a big fan of Dr. Pierce. Yeah, he's good. All right, I'll go with Tagore. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I'll go with Tagore. Yeah, he's great. I mean, AoE revive, which is, is it AoE or t two targets? I can't I think remember. it's, uh, it might be random revivals. Oh, all the damage. No, it's everyone. Ooh. Yeah, everyone with a shield. That's great. And then he's got the AoE attack with increased speed. And I think, it's a, no, that doesn't have a shield. It has a heal, though. Yeah. So yeah, heal for your team with increased speed and an AoE attack. He's fantastic. 
just a really good support. Like when I used him for some of the Dead with Jedi challenge stuff, mm -hmm. it was like, wow, this champion is better than I thought he was going to be. Like he really works very well when you put it all together. Just a lot of survivability. Um, yeah, he's just fantastic. Build him fast and lots of health, which is how you'd want to build a reviver anyway. And yep, it all synergizes beautifully well. And yeah. in a beautiful body as well. Look at that. Yeah, I think he's up there. He's one of, he might be one of the best revivers from the epics and below. Yeah, oh be. yeah, 100%. Because that increased speed is massive on a three-turn cooldown. Absolutely Yeah, huge. it's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the heal is, re is really nice too. Because yeah. it's his max HP and he's got lots, so. Increased defense well. on the ally with the lowest current HP. Mm -hmm. It's a bit nifty, but I like it. It's something, yeah. I guess. Um, all right, uh, where are we going next? We're going to lean over to... Skinwalkers, right? Skinwalkers, yeah. Ooh, their epics are not very Ooh. good. <laughs> oh, man. Yikes, and you exclude the voids. It's really not very good. If I had to only pick one, probably Fane. Fane the Pain. Pro but is she lame? Fane the Pain. She's not lame. She's, she's great. not lame, but she's insane. She's great. She, she hits really hard. Like, she genuinely, <laughs> genuinely really good single target damage. Brings decreased defense and weaken. Brings mm -hmm. decreased attack and poisons. Like, there's so much there. Difficult to keep her alive, yes, but she just does tons of damage, single target. So I think that's useful enough to pick her. Yeah, I, I, she'd be my pick. No, I agree. She's great for clan boss, great for so many areas, and fits into so many of these unkillable teams, right? Yes. Um, I had a lot of fun with this dude. I don't think he was as... He's not a must build. He was just fun. His animation, yeah. I must say. Have you seen his animation before? No, I haven't. Uh, if you go into my community page, right, I actually posted a screenshot yeah. saying this is one of my favorite um, animations in the game. It is so okay. cool, man. <laughs> um, I think you have to choose one from here. Oh, man. <laughs> I like Horfries. I do like Horfries. Yeah, that would be a reasonable pick. Definitely. I think he's the only pick. I think he's, you think he's the only pick. Yeah, I'm going to go Porphyries, actually. Uh, okay. Revives two random allies. I remember when Skinwalkers was so hard to progress in faction wars, and without Horfries, it felt like an uh, impossible mission, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Also, after Revival, places that big version of strengthen of all allies, which I like. And yeah. Increased attack, increased crit rate on all allies on a 3-turn cooldown. Universe, you can use it everywhere. And also an A1 to place those stuns. It's not an insane kit, but if you do need a reviver, I think it's just a nice one to have. Um, because I don't think there's yeah. a lot of... Like, outside of Mighty Uko, is there any revivers? Uh, no. Sun Wukong revives himself, bit of a selfish one, but... Yeah, and Brackets I, as well. I think he's the only... Yeah, outside of self-revivals and uh, Uko, he's actually the yeah. only other reviver from this faction, which is interesting. Yeah. It's really good. I think Steel Skull's really nice as well. That would have been my honorable mention. Yeah. I, I've actually been using Steel Skull a lot Steel, for Curse City. Uh, Steel Skull is very good for Curse City nowadays, but I still think she needs a massive buff. And all I would do to her, nothing crazy, bring this to a free mm -hmm. turn cooldown for all players to use in Clan Boss. Yeah. And also, oh, yeah. this one here, I think I'd rather like a full out cleanse, man, honestly. From all allies. I'd even remove the healing. Oh, well. Here. Like a three turn full full team cleanse. That's like legendary territory. You don't get that with epics usually. Well, That'd there, is, too, a, there is a few, right? There's a, there's there's a, a couple. Maybe. Is there? Maybe. Or are they four turns? I don't know. Yeah, but even. I don't know. He's, he's, it's definitely not a she. Look at it. He's got the nips oh, pierced no, and out there. It. It's did not I a she. she again? Oh. Yeah, you did. You dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I've done this to <laughs> bloody... I even did a video with someone else um, the other day. I forgot who it was, right? And the same thing came up. I keep saying she, man. I don't know why you're doing that. Uh-huh. Yeah, what, you like what you like? It's all right. We don't judge. Oh, We're no. accepting. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, for God's sake. <laughs> all right. Uh, wait, was that Ogrins? No, we did... Well, we... That was... Skinwalkers, and then we're lizards. Oh, we're on the lizards. You, you get your first pick for lizards. Whoops, you do. Venomage. Ah, oh, yeah. Venomage. Yeah. There's some good yeah. picks in here, though. There are. Um, Venomage, of course, brings through with that um, unique passive, very similar to Geomancers in a sense of the damage reduction element. Um, AoE heal reduction and poisons, great for the um, Never Spider, great for so many other areas. Decreased defense, decreased attack, A1 detonations like a Dark Hail or Poison. You mm. name it, everybody needs a damn Venomage, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's the, the first pick for sure. Yeah. Do you know what I just realized? She's got these like um green goblin things, right? Uh-huh. And Vogoth's got those as well. Is there some secret love affair going on? 
Maybe. Look at this. Look. They got the. Oh, yeah. They both got their little cheeky ones. They're little, holding their globes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some quirky little stuff going on. Venomage Maybe. just loves Venomage. <laughs> All right. Uh, who you got here? I'll I'll go with Aox. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think Aox is just very strong, right? Uh, he's great for a Scarab boss, actually. Funny enough, for Curse City and for Doom Tower. Can solo that bad boy. Mm. Um, really good as well. Again, the passive is so strong. Really good for Iron Twins. Uh, and just great in general. Decreased attack, healing, a little bit of poisons. Uh, and then the passive is amazing. Extending debuffs when you're hit. That's so good. Um, so yeah, just a great support all around. Uh, I really like Aox. It looks freaking cool as well such a great design yeah he's a great champion do you know one thing i'd love to see changed on him though mm. do you know this condition of decreased crit rate on targets that 50 percent or more turn meter yeah if that was just straight up if it was, if it was straight up it'd be so strong <laughs> straight up decreased crit rate and then a decreased attack i think you would see yeah. so much more of aox everywhere like think yeah. about um even iron twins fortress right like it would mm -hmm. just be so good to be able to place that yeah <laughs> um okay so we chose venomage there's some other good picks in here as well though like jarek yeah we'll jarek's mention. really good yeah delaja actually surprised me quite a lot she yeah she's good too okay i get first pick oh i get first pick for ogres Ooh. nice oh there's some good ones here oh there's some really good ones look here. at all the ones down here for the voids though there's some the, top oh, the voids tiers, are, are good uh we go for the obvious one there we go i think i should go for the ob that's an obvious <laughs> oh, wait, one no, I was... that one all right no i think Oh, maybe it is though. <laughs> I just thought yeah, you know, I will, I will. I'll go with Ugo. Like, yeah, but now I you need to not. tell us now who is you going to choose. Thinking of, I was thinking of Skull Crusher for the counter attack, but I actually genuinely do. I think you'll probably pick him. I think it's appropriate if I go Ugo, you go Skull Crusher, based off of what we like in the game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Ugo is just so good. The AOE decrease defense block buffs, the healing, the leech. It's like everything you want. I literally use this champion in most of my Hydra teams, like three years end game account. She's that strong. The kit's just overloaded for that. Great for uh, Curse City as well, for Doom Tower as well. Really, really good uh, champion. And, um, am I on her drums? <laughs> <laughs> she carries me around on her back. Drum raids. <laughs> Drum raids, yeah. Uh, look at that. Look at that smaller. <laughs> Hi, nubs. That's okay. I can be small. Woo. Oh, I'm big. Ooh. Oh, what's all happening? All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Ugo is uh, super, super powerful. Um, I, I use her in my, some of my Hydra teams, and I use her a lot in... Yep. The, do you know what? There's one secret room, right? Do you know what? Just while we're here, I'm actually going to show you it. It's okay. Actually, it's actually funny. So in the Doom Tower, uh, which secret room is it? I think it was this one? Yeah, this one. Oh, man, it's beautiful. So I, they just... They just <laughs> they, I'm not going to go through the entire run, but I just go... Blood buffs. If I miss one, uh -huh. blood buffs. Burns. Boom. And then we get, look at that, all of that, freeze them. It's a disgusting it. stage. I just love using double Ugo. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. I'm, are you going to pick Siege Hulk instead of... Uh, I was, yeah. <laughs> Skull Crusher? Ooh, yeah. uh, I like it. I love. Yeah, he's so good, man. I, I use him so much in Curse City. The guy's I, a I absolutely a love Siege Hulk. And Such a good I champion. don't know what it is. Maybe people just don't see the value maybe they got better champion options but you know in these Cintranos waves or in these areas like um the secret rooms without yeah. sea choke like that was one of those ways which one was it in the cursed city last rotation i think it was one of the gatekeeping ones and if i mm -hmm. did not have a sea choke i would not have been able to progress uh, i just didn't have the damage but yeah Yes, the increased attack. That move is defense. insane. That move is so good. Yeah. So good. It's a one as well decreased speed and do you know what he's actually top tier for a stranix the dark fae as well yeah open oh, yeah. up with this kill the mirror <laughs> copies you then do yep. the decreased speed as well and the term meter depletion and then more <laughs> term meter depletion on day one um yeah i think i kind yeah. of recommend anybody that's looking for a fun champion to build i wouldn't say he's like oh my god he's gonna drastically change your account well you might do early game but yeah he's massive. i think he's a must but i think he definitely absolutely must build yeah i yeah. like i do use it more than siege uh skull crusher there's no question skull crusher, i would that, say so. is must build if you're doing any kind of clan boss um yeah you know progression stuff a very very top tier but if in nowadays if i could have one or the other i think i would keep sea talk if uh, i could I only have I agree one. as well yeah. yeah cool all right i like it it's Ogre weird i never spicy. thought i'd say Claude that is good too yeah I never thought i'd say that yeah there's a few uh yeah i can't believe it either all right um your first pick this time oh i got the honor here you do um this one not nice. a lot of good ones oh, there's a few there's i a think it, i think it's between these two for me and you Right? Uh, would, I, would I be wrong in saying that? 
I think there's one. No, there's a different one I'd pick, but uh, I think I think number one is mm. one of those two. <laughs> oh I'm man, curious, this is tough. Go I for. love Hoskaru. Uh, uh-huh. I think I'd go with Farrakhan now. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I, I would. I would too. Yeah, yeah, I think he's my favorite. Um, let me. How do I put this? I think he's my second favorite ally attacker in the entire game. Okay. Favorite wise, if I was to take the difficult Lady Bakagi out of the situation, legendary and below, there's not yeah. many that I would. I think for Clamboss in particular, he brings in that decreased defense to coincide with weakened champions. We got that burns and those poisons. Ally attack with increased crit rate and crit damage. Can't go yeah. wrong with this dude, right? He's he's extremely good. Yeah, extremely good. Belly button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have he would have been my pick number one. He's he's easy number one, no question. I, number two for me is actually Alika. I think she's really underrated. Mm-hmm. Um, she's an absolute beast. Not only does she hit extremely extremely Not to hard. Cut you in. Was that you that yeah. kind of slaughtered me in that? Um, was it the faction games? Oh, the, the barbarians! I think I, I attacked mean? you, and I was like, "Oh, let me take out the easier team first. And you, you, <laughs> you cooldown down, locked me out, right? Was it this one? Uh, no, so Scratch was. Oh, I was think it Scratch was barbarians, Scratch, but yeah. I, I, I did, I did beat you, Sylvan Watchers, though. Oh, that was the Creedon. Let's not get <laughs> yeah, flashbacks. Yeah, the Creedon, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, so constantly frozen. I think I beat you and Cold Brew. But I think the worst part was, was I kind of in my head, day. I was like, "Oh, let me just take out the easy one first, and yeah, yours was yeah. the hardest one." <laughs> yeah yeah you're heartbroken when you attack that yeah because yeah, you wouldn't think that it was that strong but creodon man he's broke but alika yeah. is busted too like that move hits so hard high value target two turn cooldown when it's booked she needs a ton of bucks but huge mm-hmm. single target damage i know saf uses her a lot in clan boss stuff mm-hmm. massive single target but then she also has massive aoe hit that also locks out um it's, it's insanely strong on a three turn as well she's like the most underrated big nuker in the game i think there's no question yeah um, no she is very powerful i actually ranked her up since that faction game thing i use her in faction yeah. wars nowadays i don't use her in arena but faction wars but yes yeah she's yeah, she's, she's a does. massive hitter man <laughs> i think one thing that i would love is maybe a bit of better synergy with sakara would kind of be yeah sakara kind of sucks doesn't she It'd be cool for her to so get what buff. does what does sakara do because i don't i can't even recall it where is she uh, is she even in this faction uh, she's the third one. Oh, there she is yeah oh, she looks exactly the same Exactly the same, yeah. So, well, that one's fair enough. We'll let them away at that one. We can remove random boss. What's the synergy here? Oh, so it's just to revive themselves. They revive each other. They yeah, revive, revive each themselves. Other. Yeah, sorry, revive themselves, yes. I don't know. I'd love to see some sort of maybe combo, man. I don't know what I'd want to do here. Mm-hmm. But maybe if, like, if a leaker does, like, an AoE attack, she kind of teams up and does something. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's that's kind of synergy is missing, right? The only one that I recall does that is mm. Countess Lix and Astralon, because when he does yeah, like the A one, they kind of team up, mm-hmm. right? It's interesting. Yeah, uh, Sissia does that with um, your man. I don't have as well the Void Dude, C- uh, not Cupidus, Cardial. Oh, I forgot it was even a pairing. Synergy. Oh my god! Yeah, right. They're very good in Hydra together. I never, but like, I, I forget he's about top that. tier in Hydra no matter what. So <laughs> yeah. But I'd say, like, honorable mention, I'm sure you'd agree, Hoskar is massive. Yeah, he's he's solid, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Sacred Orders, who we got here? Um, is it me first? I think, so, yeah, I think it is. A, yeah, you picked Farrakhan, I picked hers. Yeah, so it's me first. Mm-hmm. Um, God, there's so many epics, so many. Just while there's a couple. It's not going to be Phoenix, <laughs> unfortunately, though he is obviously excellent. This is tough. Can you back out so I can see the champs? <laughs> I'm admiring. Admiring my in-game model, I see. Uh, you right here. Have you got your check yet from Reed? <laughs> no, I should though, right? Damn it. <laughs> um, for me, this is a toss-up between Deacon and Mordecai. Uh, mm-hmm. Gosh, that's tough. I will go for Mordecai. I think that's... Ooh. I think the AoE burn is maybe a bit more useful. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one, though. That's tough. That's a tough call. I might be wrong in this. But yeah, I think the AoE burn with increased attack, I think, you know, with Rathalos, it's a great combo. Yeah. It's got the turn meter manipulation as well. Really good, like I said, for a lot of Curse City bosses. Really good for Hydra, like budget burn. Goes through Poison Cloud. Very useful. Um, so yeah, I, I'll go Mordecai, but you I, I, you can absolutely tell me I'm wrong. And Deacon, no, you can I think make a it's, a, it's an interesting one because, you know, with the free to play series, right? We're all allowed yeah. to have one star epic champion. And the kind of stigma around the community is who is the best out of Miscreated Monster. Yes. Like these were kind of the what we could have had. I believe it was Miscreated Monster, 
Um, okay. Deacon Armstrong, Mordecai, Ooh. or Allure. Oh, wow. So those okay, are like the that's... four that I'd say was like the best promo codes out there. And yeah, everyone just tough. kind of like, <laughs> you know, Mordecai brings in something that not a lot of epics do. Like I mentioned with the Ultimate Gallic, right. it's the reason why I was like, damn, yeah. that's a massive carry now because there's not many that do it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard, but I guess it, like someone like Mordecai is going to enable that damage of Raphalos, right? Yes, Which is... yeah. Like you, you could, in theory, get stuck for ages on a new account with no AoE no burn at all. Yeah. And you'd be stuck in so many areas and Rathalos not enabled. So you were lucky to get an ultimate Gaelic. I, I kind of Gaelic regret it. I didn't regret it because Mystery Monster is such a hard carry. But then when I was Very thinking good. about the competition, I was like, damn, like AoE burn with it and massive. And I actually chose yeah. Gaelic as my starter champion. And he was absolute okay. trash, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got the bigger, wow. when I got the ultimate Gallic, I was like, "Yes, thank God, I can at least have Gallic in the series <laughs> in some way." Nice, uh, Gallic was my starter. Oh, really? He oh, he's he's, he's definitely the worst one, hundred percent. You think? I think the Sacred Order one's worse, but which what? what? Athel. 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 No, yeah, I think she's, worse. I think she's, she's much worse. better. I think. Ah, so. Boo! Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Is your pick? Are, are you going Deacon or you got a spicy pick? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind is of there thought... a cool champion hidden behind your chair i haven't seen there's so many in this faction we've got the mistress we've got lodric oh, okay, yeah, no. we're all good <laughs> <laughs> moving swiftly on how about that? Yeah, she's all right yeah. she's all right but i mean oh, no man. deacon deacon is... Phoenix. is oh. oh man uh yeah i'm gonna go deacon it shouldn't yeah, be a yeah. hard choice but there is some really no. good options out there man um I think if I would say this is where he's going to be a must build is if you haven't got a Lissandra or you haven't got someone like a Morrigan, right? Or if you just yeah. need this kind of champion for clan boss, then yes, it's a must build. I think if you've got, if you've got champions ready for filling that role, maybe not, but that leech, that term fill and decrease, if decreased defense is very strong. So yeah. I, actually, no, I would say, I would say he's a must build um, probably just to have. Oh, absolutely. Must build. Yeah. Yeah. No question. I think he's the easy second or first pick. Along with Mordecai here. Yeah, do you, I'm just look. Do you know Frostbringer, right? And he it, added in voids. Like then you've got Shamail and Godseeker as well. Then you're like, whoa, that's a tough pick. But yeah, like, Frostbringer has, is good. She has a She's lot of potential. Good. Like this A1, if they just mm -hmm. changed this to a bloody freeze, can you imagine? She's actually quite decent for Amius, funny enough. But um, yeah, yeah, it is weird that she doesn't freeze. <laughs> that's for sure. I just think like <laughs> if she, if she just had a freeze A1. Triple hit, yeah. decrease defense, increase speed, and increase attack. I think she'd fit into so many of those um, finite hard teams. Yeah. Supreme Frostbringer when Raid. You could do it. The Supreme yeah. Frostbringer. <laughs> yeah. You could easily make her kid insane by adding in a couple of freezes. I, I do that. love Ankara as well, though. Yeah. He's very good. All right. Um, um, so we're getting down to the final two. It's the final yes. countdown. You have the first pick for Ooh. small faction in High Elves. I ah, this is actually much harder than I thought. Uh, oh yeah, there's a few good ones actually. Uh, do you know what? Just oh. because I've never mentioned him on the channel, I'm gonna go for Neldor. Ah yeah, he was maybe gonna be my pick actually. Yeah yeah, very good pick. If not Brady was an elf, this is what he looked like, and if he shaved his beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's, he's kind of came into so many teams right for the finite hard that I've been seeing around the community. Not really yes. had the chance to try it yet. But, you know, that three times at random, this is what Frostbringer should have. This A1, and it'll be perfect. Yeah. But, yeah, this is very, very strong. We've also got that um, decreased speed and heals this champion by the damage dealt, attacks two times. And it mm -hmm. also attacks one enemy four times. With four decreased, times, yeah. Decreased attack and <laughs> decreased accuracy. So you can kind of, like, open up with this one, lead him with the A1 and just keep that term meter down alongside someone like a Blizzard, right? Um, yes, 100%. Admits. So I think he, he is a no-brainer for anybody that's looking for a finite hard team, right? Yeah, he's a must build for Curse City. Like, yeah. no question. He's going to be a hard carry. For, he already has been for some stages. I got away with it last rotation. I didn't need him, but, or this one. I can't Look remember at this which. This passive. But, oh my God. Yeah, the passive's nuts. Whenever with this an ally places a freeze debuff, this champion has a 30% yeah. chance to counterattack. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, join, just join in so it doesn't get the penalty to damage, which doesn't really matter. But it's more about he could then come in with more freezes and it. Yeah. Very, very I good. wonder about his damage potential from this A3 and how significant it is for the waves. You know, I actually don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. I need to try that. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, yeah. I think he is the first pick. So you've done well. You've done well there. Um, okay. For me then, it's sort of between... I love you, Sinia. 
she is actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, she's sort of weird because like, funny thing is, I've never pulled her. I've got a five star soul for her, but the first one I pull has got to be fed into Lady Mikage. It's gonna be forever before I can actually use this chick. Um, she is good. I say like Royal Guard is a more obvious answer. I'm thinking between Royal Guard or Skaramis, probably my two. Yeah, I'd be picking from both very strong. I'll go with Royal Guard as like a safer, the, the more general option. Like it's it's fairly darn likely you're going to be using Royal Guard at least for like one of your Hydra teams, probably for a lot of people. Um, he is really, and he's got great other moves as well. Like for Dark Fey as well, he's great with the max HP damage, the four hit with turn meter control, massive, and decreased speed is, is actually extremely good. And then decreased defense A1. Um, so he does really well with some accuracy. Okay, so, so he's actually yeah, pick got, Royal Guard. He's actually got a better aura than Rathalos. Yeah, his aura is insane. Yeah, it's, it's pretty insane, strong. insane, right? So if you pay out Rathalos of Royal Guard, you know, you get an extra 5%. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, but I think like the AOE max HP nuke, he's just great. It's just great, champ. Yeah. And the utility is great too. I think he's... No, yeah, I agree. He's a, he's a no-brainer. I think I've got three max on my account. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> but yes, Skaramis, massive. Um, I love you, Cynia. Um, She's good, yeah. It's actually Kinelia's mom, for anyone that's not aware. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a few good champions in here. A few good champions. You, Even you Ambassador. Wake up, she'll, be, she'll be in the bed with you as well. <laughs> Kinelia on one side. I love you, Cynia on the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Banner Lords. Oh, good faction. Uh, this is, actually, oh, do you know what you're a decent. you're a snake to yourself and do you know why you used to be why? the archmage helmet you know that's, that's right that's what i subscribed to back in the day all those years ago mm -hmm. and then you turn into mm -hmm. fenax i did do you, do you want to is there anything you want to say to him like a little sorry for like you know yeah uh <laughs> archmage helmet i'm sorry i'm picking stagnite and not you oh oh, oh. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh my god the apology that turns into an insult talk about kicking while he's down man oh, oh man <laughs> vicious <laughs> uh stagnite is the pick though look decrease attack and defense aoe double hit decrease speed a1 simple effective universally good even his passive is quite nice with the accuracy yeah um yeah, he's just, it's just amazing. I actually, I still use him in my Fire Knight team. Uh, when I get Lady Mikage, maybe that will change, but like, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's just insanely good. Insanely, insanely good. Top tier. Yeah. Yep, just continues to be useful. Curse City is going to keep him useful kind of forever more, no question. So yeah, Stack Knight, he's insane. Do you know what? I'm going to ask you a question, right? So on my yep. free to play, you actually chose so many champions today that I pulled recently. If you could, ah. if you could choose Dr. Pierce or Stack Knight, which one would you say is better? Stag Knight. You'd go, so I made the good decision then. Because I was in two yeah. minds about it. I was like, Duke brings in that um, kind of provokes and decreased accuracy. They're very similar. But I think Stag Knight yes. just doesn't have any kind of requirements to do that. Just does it. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, he's a bit more straightforward. And the decreased speed A1 is just more useful. And his affinity kind of works out being useful yeah. as well, weirdly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Duke's good as well. But I do like Stag Knight more. There's a couple champions in here I'd probably go for. I would have went for Stag Knight, but we're doing it just for you, nubs. He's good. Yeah, he's got it. Uh, I can't great. believe you. <laughs> now you come face to face with the beast. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, if I was picking... Am I looking right? Yeah, if I was picking second, <laughs> I would have picked you. I would have. Do you know he's thinking? He's like, I was with you when you was on the low subscribers and now Fenex gets on yeah, the yeah. love, you know. He, he, he's, he's grandpa nub, right? We've talked about anti-nub. This is grandpa nub. Like, this is like, you know, the whole hairline is receding. Mm -hmm. it's going eventually it's going to be shaved off the beard will grow longer and that'll be me <laughs> getting there the gray hairs coming in nub dramps let's go that's that's me in i don't know 10 years 10 years <laughs> oh man no, more than that that's me in <laughs> that's me in 30 years hopefully um yeah but actually i generally would choose um Archmage Helmet. I feel like at the time that you get him in the game, he can have a lot of value for you. Pairs very well in those Seer teams as well, right? Brings in all of those yeah. buffs, um, mm. you know, that you want to strip off. But increased speed, increased crit rate, increased crit damage on a three turn. We've got that stun potential coming out from the critical hits of the A2. And also just fills this champion's turn meter with a decent aura for Arena. And he's also immune to turn meter decrease effects. So you can't get control yeah. yourself. Um, I think he's still a no-brainer. Just to have on your account, whether that be Centranos or um, Secret Rooms or Doom Tower, I definitely feel like he's worth the investment when you get him in the game. For sure. 100%. 100%. But Lady Annabelle probably next in line. She, yeah, yeah. She's the honorable mention, no question. But a bomb, all right. For two big reasons. Um. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I like that's what we're ending it on. <laughs> well, we're actually not ending on that because actually oh, I saved what? this for for towards oh. the end. We're gonna do one oh. sacred shot in the dream for Marta, guys. Oh. Are you ready? I'm Here ready. we go. Bring it home. This is it. Like an Irish. Sick. Oh. Hey, you picked her. You picked her. Oh, do you she, want something? She, she arrives. Before we sign off as well, sorry about this. I actually need to show you something. I was so excited to show you. Okay. okay. Look, look what I pulled behind the scenes. I pulled a shamrock. Let's oh, go. Oh, nice. Look at He's Irish. so underrated, dude. Yeah. He is so I underrated. I remember we spoke about it last time about like the difference between him and Lady Kimmy, in a sense. Yeah. And yeah. he brings in so much more than I feel like, look at this. Like, <laughs> What more yeah, do you want right. from a dude, right? It's pretty cool, man. It is a little random, but you get the important stuff, which is like the increased speed, increased defense. It's just, or yeah. increased defense is always increased speed. It's most of the time, but yeah, he's he's great. He's really so underrated for Hydra. People super sleep on Shamrock all the time. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah, on that note, I guess that's going to be all for today's video. That was kind of eventful, especially with the introductions. It was a bit wild <laughs> trying to get yeah. the video started, but I appreciate you coming <laughs> on again. Obviously, it's been quite a while. Um, we kind of stopped doing the weekly. It's turning to monthly nowadays. But uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, we're actually going to be heading over to Nubbury's channel. Well, technically, we've already done it, but for you guys, head over there. It'll be in the description below. Drop him a cheeky sub. We're doing it for <laughs> Legendary Champions, um, same kind of format. Uh, anything you want to say here before we sign off? Ah, uh, Anti Nub says thanks for watching, kids. Make sure eat your eat your greens, eat your broccoli, eat your kale, eat your spinach. <laughs> oh wait, don't say eat your kale. People actually feed their kales. Eat your kale. <laughs> <laughs> yum yum. <laughs> He's good for you. <laughs> uh, we need to find out who um, Auntie Nub raids or whatever your name was in the in the name up here. Please get in contact with us or comment on this video. Please, you'll make his day. <laughs> Yeah, on that note, guys, have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you on a video soon, and peace.